Hello and welcome to Byron Borrow, where every game's worth playing, and we are currently playing through Dark Souls 3 to give our honest opinion. A new segment that I'm going to try and whip up here. Um, so, with me today is my brother Adam, who is a much bigger fan of this series than I am, so I figured I would have somebody else come in and say nice positive things about this. Mostly so that it wasn't just me pooping all over the game. Raise the sun! It's a thing. Yeah, I know. Did you really have to say it? I had to. Someone out there would be so happy I did. I doubt it. Somebody in the comments will correct you on that. They probably will not. I think they will. Um, okay. So, we're playing Dark Souls 3, and... Since you're new to the show, uh, the format usually runs, we talk about the graphics, we talk about the gameplay, and we then talk about uh, the story. So let's get started on the uh, graphics first, and I really like them. And this is coming from somebody who is not a huge fan of fantasy games. I, honest to God, really, really love the scenery and just the detail that they put into this. It looks really, really good. I really wish I could have more dragons like this. I don't know for sure whether that will continue to be a problem as you play through the game or not. Um, I've only got like two or three areas into the game right, right now, but mm -hmm. I've been able to go back and forth through them a lot and get a feel for the areas and, and kind of find some of the smaller things in them. Um, but the dragons and uh, like you were saying, the general environmental feel is very immersive. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of good uh, color texturing, and it's not as it's not as like gray and black as it was with the uh, Bloodborne series. And it's not nearly as flat and single colored based on whatever section you're in, like it has been in Dark Souls 2, where if you went to a section that had a bunch of fire uh, mm -hmm. in the area or there's a bunch of grassy areas. It, it's a nice balance between the different colors. But yeah, it, it grass, doesn't it's a massively vibrantly green. Right, it there. doesn't look washed out, but at the same time, it doesn't bloom quite as much as Dark Souls Two did. Right, and honestly, I think that's really done a lot of difference. It's gonna. There we go. Yeah, yeah you're within his vision. I absolutely range. love the dragon designs they came up with for this. It looks super badass. I have not had the good fortune to fight one yet, but I'm isn't looking that, forward to it. Isn't that quite the opposite of what you had then? You've had the good fortune not to have to fight them? No, no. It's, it's good fortune to fight them because it's always fun to encounter a boss, which they're actually surprisingly scarce in the in this one. Uh, not that there's not a lot of bosses as you go further in right. and finish the game, uh, but in Dark Souls 1 and 2, it was not hard to find something akin to a boss or a mini boss within say a decent half hour of gameplay right uh, in this one you're only going to run into a maximum of one and a half uh if you can push that to two if you know a certain uh way to go about the the section God, of the is game. he gonna freaking come down yeah right? you're in his patrol path He's oh, gonna God damn it. So i'm gonna have to fight him in a second yes God. If you move carefully, you can sneak behind him, but I would be very careful. Run. Just run. If you want to get your stuff, just run. I don't, I don't think he saw me. He saw you. Really? Because he's not coming up. <laughs> Does this? Uh, you have to go to the other side. Yeah, of course it didn't open from this side. Oh, but damn, he didn't see Okay, you. I'm going to quietly sneak up and... Leave this guy alone. Bastard. Yeah, I know. I'm, can I say that on the show? I'm just... Yeah, you can say whatever you want, dude. It's the internet. Awesome. Who gets the shit? Well, I don't know. Exactly. Besides, nobody's actually going to watch this, so who cares? No, you never know. And... Hey, what the shit? Also, there's a guy there. Yeah, I noticed. Yeah. I should have um, told you that. Would have been nice. Anywho. Have you um... Have you gone up those stairs to the right yet? I haven't gone anywhere over here yet, actually. Okay. This is literally my first time being here. Uh, let me save you some trouble down the road. Go back across this thing and go out that door right there. Okay. Yeah. You will find something that you'll be very happy about. Actually, I'll find two somethings, yes. Okay. 
This isn't like a Dark Souls experience trolling thing. It's actually just a campfire. Oh. And then there's an item over in the corner. Cool. But, uh... I'm gonna go get the item first, then. Oh, sure. Um... But, yeah, I think this is a really, really great look. Again, I absolutely love the look of the dragons. They look both mythical and realistic. As far as, you know, how dragons, I think, would look. Um, that being said, I think we've talked enough about the talk, so let's move on to the gameplay, which... Take a rest. Let the, evil, let the hate flow. Um, no, I honestly enjoy... There's massive quotes around that I enjoy, but I enjoy uh, this gameplay for the most part. Um... Slow down there, buddy. And it feels a lot tighter than Dark Souls 2, while at the same time, uh, it, God, reminds me all too much that I'm playing Dark Souls. Um, no, I, I think this is a very, very good, uh, feel for the controls. They feel like they have a lot of weight to them when you roll. Uh, you get up not quite swiftly, but at the same time, you don't just bounce right back up. Should I kill these guys? You can. It's optional. I'm gonna have to kill this guy, though. You're gonna want to check your right here in a second. Back off, a-hole. Um, yeah, so... Dark Souls... <laughs> the thing, in case you couldn't tell, I'm not a fan of these games. Not It's not that you're not a fan of them, it's just you're not good at it yet. And there's the excuse that I get from every single Dark Souls player. You don't like it because you're not good at it. Unfortunately, the only way to get good at it is to like this kind of play. To like... Is somebody just going up there? No. I could have sworn. Anyway. You have to enjoy this play style. You have to enjoy uh, the punishment versus reward. Oh, you really could have told me that guy was freaking that. Hey, Sean, that guy's going to transform. Yeah, thanks. All right, go near him. Hold up your shield. He'll be able to take at least one good hit and then dodge away. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get this freaking firebomb thing to go away. God! Dodge, 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 dodge. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna... I'm, I'm about... I just bounced out. Shame. Uh, that guy. Am I gonna have to go get my souls through Fatty McBlubbers in there? No, you are not. They, oh, thank God. There has been an established thing since Dark Souls 1 where if you fall off a cliff, the point of your falling off unless you fell off a secondary ledge, meaning that you fell off, hit a secondary thing, fell off again, and then hit the ground and died. Okay. okay. In all instances of that, it will be the first ledge that you walked off and or fell off of that will have your souls. So you can go right back to where you just jumped off of. Oh, that's good. Yes. So all I have to do is remember that that guy was up there. And kick my ass. And... Kill him first. Kill him first. Um, with the... Getting back to what we were talking about with uh, the gameplay, though. Right. Um, I don't... I don't mind the controls as far as, uh, you know, it's Dark Souls. Having played through Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, Bloodborne, and then, after starting Dark Souls 3, having mm -hmm. played through um, Lords of the Fallen, of all things, I... Uh, Which was Dark Souls Light, from what I understand. It is exactly Dark Souls Light. Um, except for the final boss, which was a huge, huge pain in my ass. But eventually I was able to beat him and move on with my life. Oh, that's good. Um, Dark Souls has stuck with a pretty similar formula. Why do I keep trying to press B? I don't know. From day one. And <laughs> the difficulty in Dark Souls 3, which is slightly different from what it was in Dark Souls 1 and 2, is that they have basically upped the pace of everything within the game. Now, instead of your enemies throwing, you know, one or two massively powerful attacks that drain almost all of your life, they either have 
in this case, like what that guy did, a transformation where it becomes very dangerous even at a higher level. Right. Or you have instances where they simply have a very commanding uh, attack paces, defensive reactions, things like that, which can make the game more difficult even though there is more mobility and skill and reaction available to the player on an average, you know, even from the beginning. Right. Um, my, th my biggest problem was that the timing is not so different that I was able to basically start from scratch and pick up the pace for the new game. It is so similar to Dark Souls 1 in how it plays that it actually took me several hours of gameplay before I ended up not missing a block or missing a strike by you know, a half to a quarter of a second. It's not a large margin at all, which is kind of impressive. And at the same time, freaking inconvenient because if you're anything like me, I end up going to block or swing or counter someone more often than not and face plant into someone else's, you know, axe, sword, hammer, what have you. So you play Dark Souls then? <laughs> yes. It's what I'm well, hearing. Eventually, as I got further in, I became more familiar with enemy movements, enemy strike conversations, what they tend to do if you say, throw a, a knife at them to hit their guard sometimes in Dark Souls 1, you could stimulate an enemy to oh, God. strike. Do not go in there. Oh, you well, it was either this or fight the guy with the spear. You should have done that, because now you have him, and you have a guy to your left outside that door that's about to come through. You're cornered in here now, so you're going to have to face him. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's... Um, his spear is in his left hand, so just block or dodge to the... Well, no, you're not going to be fast enough for a dodge. All right, don't worry, dodging. There you go. All right, you can back out of the room now if you really need to. I'm guessing that I need to. Oh, wait a minute, I have some, uh, yeah, there we go. There you go. A lot of things will be very ah! on fire. Oh. Unfortunately, depth perception is kind of a thing ah! to have. Ah! <laughs> um. Ah! Uh, that didn't work so good. Great shields are still iffy for me. Uh, I used them in Dark Souls 1. And I kind of got out of them in Dark Souls 2, because in that one, you could use kite shields more often than not that had actually been ah, physical ah, defense. God. It's all a stats game, despite this being, as you call it, a hack and slash and a little bit of RPG. Right. Um, you, If you look at your item uh, stats, certain shields will have Damn it. an increased level of stability. Uh, there's the various defenses they have. <sighs> You'll be doing that a lot, by the way. Yeah, which that I there that's my review right there. Ah there's Dark Souls 3 in a nutshell. There's Dark Souls any. Yeah. Any of them. Um it's it is the <laughs> most painful version of trial and error that I've ever played. I absolutely hated, hated playing through Dark Souls 1. However, once I did accomplish it and finish it, it was one of the more satisfying game things mm -hmm. I've done. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'll give it a check. I'm, I'm handing the controller off now. And, um, okay. All right. So, as a fan of the series, would you say this is the best place to uh, come into the series? Dark Souls Three? Yes. Yes, I will. Okay. So, Easy. Reason being, huh. because of the responsiveness of your controls, whether or not the game is more difficult. The fact that you have a quick, reliable attack, and for what it's worth, even if you, in this case, have a higher... Oh dear, that's not a good technique. Yep. You cost me my... I cost you yours. You cost me all those... Well, it was only like 5k. So. That's not a big deal. You can get those back. Yeah, it's, it's small. Anyway, it's I got distracted. I apologize. No, no, no. The way that the, the fighting system works in Dark Souls 3 is they sped everything up, which makes your character able to do more fluid attacks. In right. Dark Souls 1, whenever I would attempt to do this, mm -hmm. the pacing on your attacks was so much slower and choppy, for lack of a better way to frame, that uh, enemies would often do a basic attack or even an accidental, you know, quick swing, and it would end up causing you to either lose a massive amount of health because their attacks were absolutely brutal in one hit in that one, and then of course it breaks up the pacing. In this one, they will kill you out of combinations more than they will kill you out of a single strike unless you're in a massively overpowered area. 
in this case, with this guy, he's got a decent power to his attacks, yeah. but he relies on his combos. He relies on... Right, I mean, standard. even as somebody who's not a fan of this series, I'm seeing a lot of variation between how he would attack versus how people like the Black Knights from the first level of Dark Souls. Right, right. They were just uh, absolutely overpowering. Right, and it was just overwhelmingly brutal for it, and that guy didn't give you shit. They do not generally give How'd you do that? Weapon. If you push right on your D-pad, you will instantly switch out to whatever secondary weapon you have. I don't even remember getting that. Now that I think about it, why do you have that equipped if you can't use it? I don't know. Also. Yeah, I'm no good at those. It's a little difficult. Fun thing. Hmm. They have added in Dark Souls 3 that when you attack someone with a shield and you overpower them to the point where you see them fall back, kind of, All right. that is the point where you can counteract them now. Ah. So instead of having to know how to parry or find a way to sneak around behind someone, you can actually overpower them and get a critical hit like that. Okay, cool. Now, as for this, you cannot use it unless you have two hands on it. Take that off. Okay. You have just taken off a huge chunk of weight. Now your equipment load is down to 30 out of 51, oh. making your dodge so much more useful. Wow, okay. So Wait, so my stuff that I don't have equipped hurts my speed? You have it equipped. Let me explain. This is your equipment that you are currently using. Okay. You have exactly eight slots for, you know, ancillary items. Usually it's going to be, in this case, your Estus, your Ashen, usually either fire bombs or knives, right. maybe a homer bone, blah, blah, blah. You have your four sets of rings. In this case, you only have the one, but if you look at the rings, they will have this description where it says weight. I don't know why I just pointed at that screen, but I'm an idiot. Yeah, I mean, you're doing entirely an audio-based format, so I don't know. That was not well thought through on my part. Anyway, anyway, you have your pieces of equipment. Once again, weight, physical defenses, uh, elemental defenses, uh, special effect defenses, so on and so forth. Your weapons, your shields, your arrows do not have a weight to it, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to cut you short here because I'm about to go to sleep hearing all this. Is this knowledge absolutely extra super duper necessary? Actually, it is not as much as it has been in the past. Okay. The breakdown, I apologize once again. Moving on. Yeah, no, you're, you're a fan. You get into the fan portion of it. Right, um, right. The shortened, the short and shortened version of it is pay attention to how much weight you have total. Can we can we get off the pause screen so that our viewers don't have to sit here and look at one? Yes. Okay. Anyway, pay attention to the uh, the amount of weight that you have on. Okay. Because if you do not, then of course in your situation you're dodging much slower. So even if I'm not using it, so long as it's equipped to a slot, it carries weight to it. Yes, it does. Unless it is either an arrow, a uh, banner for a guild, or uh, there's another word for it. For some reason, my brain isn't working with me. That's fine. I, I don't know yeah, what it does. You have weight, so now you can dodge. Okay. Now, let's see. I thought I was way faster than that. <laughs> I didn't know what the hell was going on. That's actually what surprised me when I was watching you play initially. I'm going to heal you. That's fine. All right, so gameplay-wise, this is the best spot to jump in on. Yes, this is one of the best games to jump in on. Reason if being, you want to look into the Souls series. Yes, reason being, uh, Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, massively difficult. Evacuate. Yeah, thank you for making me not fight the T-Virus there. Actually, that is one of the first things I had thought about whenever I saw that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's what everybody who's played the Resident Evil 5 thought of. And if it helps, don't worry. I still have no clue what those are about either. Well, it doesn't make me feel better, but at least I know I'm not the only one who doesn't know what the hell is going on. Uh, Solve the problem, Peter. Okay. Uh, so, best spot for jumping in on the Souls series... Is that guy going to jump up and attack me? No, he will not. However, oh, this guy will. Oh, fuck that guy. There. Wait, that little... That bigger dude had a little dude inside of him? And he jumped out of the thing? No, no, no. He, he was, was... Like that one right there? He was, he was crouching. Oh, he was crouching in the arm. No, no, he was next to it. It just it looked funky. Oh, okay. Because okay. okay. it just looked like a slumped over armor piece. Okay. Um, I'm not going to fight this guy. I'm going to run by this guy. And that is absolutely fine. I have no problems being a coward in this game. Awesome. It seems to be the way to actually win is don't don't fight, just run. 
it's not a terrible strategy actually. In this case, because you do this, you run this way, dodge that, kill him, catch this guy. You're somebody who's put in way more time to this than I have. I have. So. This is actually one of the better farming sections in the game. That uh, once you get more, you know, equipment and uh, levels and stuff, you can go to further sections of the game. But this is a pretty reliable spot where you can either avoid the enemies you don't want to fight or farm as needed. There we go. Okay. So now that you've gotten access to this place, you've avoided that other big guy who can really be a pain in the butt because he has a, I don't know if it's a faith spell or something that does area of effect, but it, it can really wreck you if you, you're not careful. Huh. So you take this tram up, you open the door, guess where you're at? Right where we started. Minus this guy. Ow. Wow, you really know what you're doing here, don't you? Probably. Um... I guess that's it for uh, gameplay. It plays really well and handles pretty darn good as far as Dark Souls is concerned. The biggest thing you have to know when playing this game is it's going to be a risk-reward thing, and it's going to be a stats game. So Actually, that brings me to the next part that I wanted to talk about is the risk-reward factor in playing this game. And one of the reasons that I'm not a huge fan of it is that I don't think that the reward uh, quite works works out well enough to the risk you put in. That is actually a, a fair observation. Early on I had similar opinion to it, but as you get further into the game and you get more familiar with how everything plays out, in this case, uh, leveling your character uh, leveling your equipment at times, and the fact that every time you go to a bonfire, your enemies entirely reset within a given area. What I used was the age-old technique of grinding. So you'll run through all these areas, kill all these enemies with whatever technique that you seem to find works best. Right. My general thing is run through here, you know, hack and slash here and there, avoid getting hit as much as possible to conserve your estus, so that way you can go through the areas longer. Once you get your techniques down that work, and avoid the most amount of problems that you can, and avoid the most amount of trips back to the bonfire that you can, you'll find that you'll get more souls consistently as you go through the areas, which allows you to level your character, which allows you to go further into the game without stopping. In applying that sort of, uh, I don't want to call it a technique, but uh, approach to the, how you play the game, you're able to mitigate the, the risk-reward issue. Because in this case, you're only getting a handful of souls from each one of these enemies, and if right. you don't have a proper approach to them that works, then it can be really difficult fighting, you know, three enemies as opposed to one, 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 and one. And that makes a world of difference in being able to level the character up and going for bigger rewards through bigger risks. <laughs> in that case, familiarity, knowing that he was going to strike, and knowing that this guy stays down until you hit him, I get lucky, I get... You know, a kill, and then another kill. Okay. So, it's basically one giant process of that in different areas and different situations. Oh, also, one more thing. I don't know if you have gotten this yet. And so, another example of how to make things easier on yourself. Figuring things out. Small little secrets coming through. In this case, you've already found the... Uh, uh, golden birch or golden sap, whatever it is that gives you the electric damage. I guess. Yep, it's uh, it's usually there. Okay. So you've probably already picked it up. Okay. But yeah, looking for small things like that can give you either a key item that will either be a weapon that's really good for you, maybe a piece of armor, maybe a ring, so on and so forth. Okay. But that's, uh, that's how you can make the risk-reward more worth it in the average gameplay. Because through that you pick up, you know, a few thousand souls you make six or seven runs through the area and you've got a level. Right. But that's, again, has always been my problem, is that the risk is its reward. In that once I complete a section, your reward is not uh, something to make yourself better. It's, congratulations, you have another challenge. And I don't find that appealing. That I can understand. 
That's, um... And I guess that just comes down to a personal choice. So... There's not a whole lot that can be done about that in particular. Right. And I guess if you feel that the reward is a new challenge to overcome, then by all means, you're probably going to enjoy these games a lot more than me. Personally, I prefer being able to have something to show for it beyond a uh, achievement or trophy pop-up. Let's say, congratulations, you've beaten so-and-so. And I can be like, yay. I did it. <laughs> I ran into that a little bit with uh, Dark Souls 1. Because yeah. the bosses were more closely put together. Yeah. And it can be overwhelming and infinitely infuriating by any stretch of the imagination. But my thing, uh, I guess it's... Oh, come on. There you go. Okay. There we go. Yeah, you're right. It, it does come down to a personal preference, and uh, there's really not much you can do about that. Just try it out. If you like it, go with it. If you don't like it, eh, give it a test run. Get to the first boss at that point. If you decide you don't like it, that's a good milestone point, even if you haven't beaten the boss. Right. All right. Well, we've talked longer than I probably would have thought of <laughs> talking about uh, the gameplay on this. So let's move on to. I don't have anything equipped for that. So let's move on to uh, the final portion, which is the story. Um, here's what I know of the story of Dark Souls. Uh, you were dead. Now you're not. And a group called the Lords of Cinder are coming back from the dead as well, and they are bad. And that's Dark Souls Three. That's a wrap, everybody. Okay. Thanks for coming. Nice job. Let's go home. Can <laughs> you shed any more light on that? Nope. I mean, I kind of can, in that you are, your, your task, as given to you by the Firekeeper, is to find the Lords of Cinder and force them onto their thrones, which you see in the initial area. As a matter of fact... So they don't want to go back on their thrones? They do not. They are stirring because... Uh, Alright, there is a lot of story to be given out of this. The... Alright, well, spoilers here, if you don't want any more... Um, uh, how would you recommend people play this game? Uh, would you recommend just buying it right off the bat, or would you, like I would do, and essentially just borrow this from a friend and see if it's worth my time? In that they would, uh, to just play the game, borrow yes. it, b rent it, or buy it? Yes. I would say definitely rent it first. Renting it first. You will never, you can never predict uh, whether you will like Dark Souls or not until you've played it. I thought I would love it when I first played it. I literally mm -hmm. raged quit within a half hour. This is Dark Souls 1. Yeah. I went back six months later, almost to the day, and played it, rage quit again. Went back another couple of months later, rage, and while I got angry at it, I was familiar with that how it was supposed to go, right. and I stuck with it, and that's when it kind of clicked for me. Okay. And so for the people that, that maybe that's the case, you know, rent it, give it a try, rent it, give it a try. Maybe it'll click with you the first time, and you rent so, it, and you buy it. Rent it a couple of times and see if it's for you. Yeah. And Welcome home. yeah, like I said, this is a very well constructed game. I mean, like. It. Mind if I dump some levels in? No, go ahead. Um, I myself am running this through Gamefly. I'm probably going to send it back not long after this. Um, and um, so, yeah. If you want to see what all the fuss is about, uh, check this out. Rent it through. What the hell's over here? Well, once this loads up, I can show you. There's a little shortcut thing that'll get you a few pieces. Oh. Uh, yeah, so rent it through Redbox or Gamefly, or uh, if you're not so willing to uh, dump some money into it, borrow it from a friend who has it and see what all the fuss is about. So getting back to the story, uh, Lords of Cinder don't want to act like Lords of Cinder, so... 
you have to force them to go do what? I'm not gonna get that just yet. There's a trick where you can get up onto that rooftop. Okay, and uh, get you access to a few things early, keeping Anesta shard, which will give you an extra charge. Okay. Um, so, the Lords of Cinder are spurned on, spoiler alert, major spoiler alert, by the way. Well, we're past that. Oh, okay. well, we're not, actually. I haven't mentioned that much yet. Well, yeah, but I told everybody the verdict. If they want to do this, do it this way. And if not, then whatever. Gotcha. So, do, so, wait, is that the Bloodborne person? Maybe. Mm. Unkindled, are we? And fast what? on the trail, then these red eyes are for you. Oh, Use right. them to pillage embers. And what else are unkindled ashes? <laughs> he has the look, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. So, as you see, there are one, two, three, four, and five thrones, each for a Lord of Cinder. Okay. The Lords of Cinder are summoned because they are a part of the original enkindling of the flames, which is how the Age of Mankind comes to be. You uh, you get this lore through Dark Souls 1 opening sequence. Okay. So for getting the story for people, I suggest just look up YouTube, watch the videos, uh, either an explanation of the story or all the cutscenes rolled into one okay. and, and get it from that. The short version is you have to find all the Lords of Cinder, kill them, bring their bodies here, and put them on the thrones. I don't know what the hell happens after that. I assume they reenact the uh, the enkindling, and life goes back to normal, and, you know, hollows are gone, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, side question, then. What's the difference between being enkindled and being hollowed? Uh, hollowed? For those of you who don't know, hollow was what you were in the first game, and you were an undead person that tried to gain their humanity back versus uh, being enkindled, which means to have fire. Basically, yes. Uh, the difference being that enkindled, even though you died, you still look human. Right. And Is this just for them uh, getting tired of animating two different faces for everything? I actually don't know about that. But I do know that um, in this... Leave a comment down below if you know what the hell the difference between enkindling and being hollowed is, or undead, or whatever the crap they called it. I don't freaking know. Well, you're, you're still an undead, even when you're enkindled or unenkindled. Then why, why change it? The reason being is, if I'm not mistaken, once again, past lore through past games. Okay. You are the replacement for the person who is supposed to sacrifice themselves and or link the fires to restart the Age of Man. Each Dark Souls opens and closes during the period where that fire is burning out. The second one, unless you did a certain, like there's a series of DLC that you go through and if you complete those then you can kind of change how you end it, but that one you end uh, by stepping into, once again, another fire thing, fire shrine and restarting the Age of Man. In this one, you are an Enkindled, which functions slightly differently. How, I don't know yet. However, uh, you use the... Uh, let me see if you have any of these. Oh, the Embers? Yes, you use Embers to Enkindle yourself, which act as the uh, Humanities from previous games, and you get increased health, you get increased... Um, you so essentially, it's line. different for the sake of being different. No, it eventually will have a point within the story because you can actually become hollowed within this one. <laughs> What's the purpose of being in Kindle then? Well, I don't know yet. That's why I'm I'm going oh. to the story to figure it out. To me, it's interesting because I've already been through the other games, and now it's like, okay, why is this different? However, if you get through the first boss, get to the second section, you will find a person who can hollow you by adding the dark sigil to you, and through uh, why would dying, you want that? reason being is because in this version it functions differently. The Dark Sigil now, instead of simply being a way that you lose your souls, uh, it is a stacking item so that as you die and progress through the game, you get more stacks of this on your person. Okay. Once you get enough stacks, this person will give you access to an early level for no cost. He can do this up to five times, then he will go away and then another person will come in and they have certain items available to you because whenever this happens, you join a specific cult. So, 
in Dark Souls 1 and 2, you could do this in order to gain access to key items. Okay. And the same thing goes with this one. The difference being that now you have to become hollowed for this specific cult. It does not change anything else about your character other than the fact that you have that item, that you get those stacks, and that you will begin to hollow. So what you're telling me is that Dark Souls uh, is a poster child for joining cults. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to argue that one. It's, it's, it's pretty bad. So there you have it, kids. Play Dark Souls. Drink the Kool-Aid. Have fun. Can you give a thumbs up? Kool-Aid! Oh, there you go. Good enough. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, and that's it. Do you have anything you want to add? Uh, I'm good. Okay, that's it. Dark Souls, everybody.